Let's look again on the system which consists of several optical elements and now let's assume that the entire system is described by matrix M. So here how did I construct the matrix M? I took the action of each surface or actually each element inside our system and from one to end and I multiplied the corresponding matrices in such a way that here I have m n times m n minus one and so on and finally m one so I constructed the matrix of the entire system. So this matrix, as we were talking before, will be in the form of, will have four elements and can be represented in the form A, B, C, D. And this matrix is called system rate transfer matrix. So now let's look what is, where is input of my system, where is output of my system. It's obvious that since I started from the first surface of the first optical element, this is input of my system and the plane which is passing through all these points and perpendicular to the optical axis, so this is optical axis, so this plane now is called input of course all points which are on the same distance from the optical axis they are equivalent so th that's why we have the so all these points are equivalent, so they are located on the plane which is perpendicular to the optical axis. And the plane which is passing through the last surface of the last optical element, in our case, is output plane. But in one of our examples, we have shown that we can construct another matrix for which we can change the input or output or both of them planes location. So for example, I can build a system where the input plane is located on the distance L1 from the first surface of the first optical element. So now input plane is here and the output plane will be somewhere here on the distance L2. So the input and output plane, it's not something physically fixed to the system. It depends how we are building our ray transfer matrix. So for the previous, the previous matrix, we started from this surface and we ended this surface. Now for the new system, if I define input plane on the L1 distance from the first surface, uh, from the surface of the first optical element to the input plane, I need to construct new matrix M prime, which will be the old matrix multiplied by two translation matrices. So 
In the left, there will be lost translation matrix corresponding M T2, and from the uh, from the right in the equation will be the first translation matrix. So again, I have the matrix in the form of A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. But now for this ray transfer matrix, the input plane is located on the L1 from the first surface of the optical element and the output plane is located on the distance L2 from the last surface of the last optical element. So the input and output plane in our optical system is something which we define while building the matrix uh, or, uh, or ray transfer matrix of our system. We have a system which has some optical elements inside. So this is the surface of the front surface of the first optical element. This is the last surface of the last optical element. And so this is optical system. And here I have input plane and output plane. And here I have optical axis. So now this entire system is described by ray transfer matrix in the form of A, B, C, D. And if you, now, if I am sending the ray to optical system, exactly in the input plane, as we were talking, it will be characterized by position Y zero, angle alpha zero. And now in the output plane, there will be position Y1 and angle alpha 1. And now, as we uh, talked before, so the Y1 is equal Y0A plus alpha 0B and uh, alpha 1 will be equal y zero c plus alpha zero d. So as we see, of course, the position and angle in the output plane depends on both the input position and alpha through these all coefficients. It is obvious if some of these coefficients, for example, if a is zero, then the position in the output will be dependent only on the angle in the input plane, which makes these elements properties interesting to know which element, which element of the system is responsible for what. At least what will happen if some of these elements become in zero. So now let's consider. If a element of the ray transfer matrix is equal zero, what will happen in that case? In that case, the height of the ray in the output plane will be not dependent on the height in the input plane. And it will be dependent only on the alpha, the angle 
which ray makes with optical axis on the input plane. So that means if, if I send the parallel rays to the optical system independently on the height as long as the alpha zero is the same for all of them the position where they will come to the output plane will be the same so it means all the rays will come to the position y1 independently on the position but what does it mean that if we are sending parallel rays and all these rays will come to the same point. It, mean, it means that the output plane is the focal plane now in our optical, for our optical system. If B element of our ray transfer matrix is equal zero. So what we have then the equation for the position of the ray in the output plane y0 or y1 will be equal y0a plus zero. So only the position in the output plane will depend on the position in the input plane doesn't matter which angle we are sending the rays so if I am sending several rays to the input plane at different angles but at the same position they will come at different angle but the same position in the output plane so of course, I can show this situation in a little bit different way. I can say that if I am sending the rays in the input plane to the optical system from the same height, y0, they will all come to the same height at y1 in the output plane. That means that if I build the matrix in such a way that the input plane will coincide with the position of the object, if I place object here, from each point of the object, rays will come to some point in the output plane which will form the image. So now the input plane and output plane are conjugate. Also, in that case, as we can see, the A is equal y1 over y0, which means the A coefficient, if B is equal 0, the A coefficient of the system is a magnification of the system. If C element equals zero, so now, of course, as we know that A and B coefficient define the height of the ray in the output plane, while C and D coefficient define the angle. So now, if C equals zero, alpha one is equal zero plus alpha zero D only and it means that independently on the height of the input ray if I send several ray to the input plane at different height but with the same angle all of them will come to the output plane from the output plane again at different height but at some constant angle
So that system is so-called telescopic optical system. So where I will have different angular, uh, where I have certain angular magnification in that system. Finally, if d is equal zero, the equation for the output angle as a function of input angle and position becoming y zero c plus zero. And it means that the angle in the output plane depends only on the position. So it means if I send the rays from the same position in the input plane y0, all the rays will come at different position but with the same angle with respect to the optical axis. It means that the input plane now is the front focal plane for our optical system. Or if we send, vice versa, if I send the parallel rays parallel to each other in reverse direction for the, for the output plane, they all will meet in the input plane in the same point, which will be the focal point. Okay, so, okay, this knowledge, which elements uh, makes which function in our uh, for the system ray transfer matrix allows us to solve uh, many practical problems and now we will look some examples